Can you hear me okay? Cool. Good morning. Welcome to Saturday morning Pilates. Uh, we've got a nice kind of mat-based classical kind of workout. My eyesight is very bad. So I'm looking at my notes here and I'm actually realizing I can't really see any of my notes. So I'm going to try and go by memory and feel as to what feels good. So I think because it's a nice Saturday and some of you are still waking up in the morning, let's just have a little pendiculation on all fours. So this is just a wake up for the body. Um, be kind to your wrists here. So just really use it as a, a nice little check-in of where your body is today. So just going a little bit back and forth into the toes, have a little side to side, just kind of go in whatever uh, movement you feel you need right now. And it might be that you stretch the arms forward. It might be that you come back into a little kind of seated shell, whatever really just gets the body kind of flowing a little bit this morning. Wake up the shoulder blades. Move them on your back. And then just uh, allow yourself to kind of arrive with the hands right underneath your armpits. So the wrists right below your armpits and the knees below your hip bones, whatever the toes feel good to be. So tucked under or flat. And then just gently come into a nice, soft cat stretch. But I want you to focus on opening the vertebrae all the way up your back. Inhale at the top. And then exhale, open your sit bones, send your tail up. Try and think of opening the vertebrae at the front and really focusing on this upper back, sliding the shoulders, really letting them be free, opening the collarbones and almost feeling like you're lifting out of your hands. So the hands can be light here. So exhale, curling up into your cat stretch. There's a little bit more weight on the, on the knees and the hands. And then nice little articulation, slightly spiraling the arms out. So feel that lightness in the hands as the chest bursts forward, the collarbones widen, check the head neck. And again, rolling up. So I just want you to really feel very toppy like very elastic, not too muscled. We don't want to force the shoulders uh, apart here. And then coming into that nice open sit bone, flexed hip, make sure here, nice and springy, belly connected as we go into the extension. So just see how that feels. Let's do that one more time. Let's focus a bit more on the low back here on this one as we open out. And then almost bring your low back to neutral and then focus on the upper back. And then just walk your hands back to your knees and just roll yourself up nicely to a nice little kneeling posture. Let's step one foot forward. Let's just wake up the hips this morning. So I want you to see in this position if you can rock your pelvis. So can you feel some movement this morning? Can you bring the front of the pelvis to the ribs? And I want you to pay attention today when we do Q12, that you're cueing 12 from the front of you. So the hip bones lifting up to the ribs, the pubic bone to the navel, that it's not a pushing down feeling. Okay, so we're not kind of clenching the bum and drawing down. So it's very much a lifted feeling. Once you've got that, float the arms up gently, kind of see how the arms are this morning. And then circle the arms back and just come off the stretch. So we're going to tilt the pelvis up, reach the arms. If you need some pillows underneath your knee, please do so. And circle the arms down. Now, if you get the foot in the right position, when we circle the arms down, you can kind of straighten this leg a little bit, maybe even take the, the toes up and get a little bit of a hamstring stretch. That feels quite nice this morning. So as you go back forward, tilt the pelvis, reach the arms, lift through the belly, circle the arms around. And if you've got the right position, you can sit back the tail and get that nice little 
hamstring stretch. And I don't even need to have a totally straight leg. It's more that you're kind of pulling the sit bones away from the leg. And tilt up, let's do that one more time. Feels quite nice, circle. Feel free to keep going with that if you like. If you feel like you need a little bit more on one than the other, then please uh, stay there. Oh, my hamstrings feel very tight this morning. Okay, so settle in to see on this side, can you get that little rocking action? Support your knee with the pillow if you need to. Tilting that pelvis up. Okay, so you want to feel the front of the pelvis to the ribs. You want to really try and feel that you're lengthening your sacrum, but you're not clenching through your bottom. Okay, so nice and tilted. Once you've got that, tilt and lift the arms and circle. Find that position for your foot. So it might need to be a little bit further forward. And bend into that front knee, tilt the pelvis, lift. And circle around and reach back. And tilt the pelvis, lift. Hopefully, those of you that I didn't say hi to at the beginning, hopefully you've joined us now. I can't uh, see if you have, so hopefully you're coming in, ready to go. And circle around. And then back to your center. Now we're just going to go into a little thigh stretch here with both. So again, I want you to tilt the pelvis up through the front. There's going to be a lot of focus on that today. That we're, as I'm seeing in the, in the studio, quite a lot of kind of 12 coming from the backside, coming from kind of squeezing the bum down. So I want you to feel a very light feeling of lift. Even if it feels like you don't move that far because you're not going to move very far if your hips are tight in this position. So we're just getting the feeling of lifting pubic bone to navel, hip bones to ribs, okay? Maybe think like there's a little elastic kind of attached from the front of your hip bones up to the bottom of the ribs. And it's very light. If you start feeling your bum kind of clenching, you're just going a bit too hard too much. So once you get that little gentle lift, and it's up to you whether you have your feet like this or this. See if you can just start to lean back a little bit through the thighs. So I'm kind of thinking of brushing the thighs down and at the same time, gently tilting the pelvis up. Wherever your hands were to be, I kind of like it at my pelvis. So I know that it's staying neutral. And if anything, there's a little bit more focus on the front hand kind of lifting up. So I'm kind of just guiding with my hand very slightly, a little tilt in the front of the pelvis. So see how your thighs are this morning. Mine are feeling very tight. Inhale to come back. And you might feel your pelvis arrives back here in that anterior tilt. So as you go back, very gentle. You don't have to go super far. Just feeling that tilt of the pelvis, the brushing down of the thighs. Okay, you might find it helpful to have the feet down if your feet are okay that, and then you can kind of melt into the shins. So just do that one more time. Maybe if you find that your ribs are kind of disconnecting, sometimes it's helpful to just hold your ribs. And then release. Good, let's come back to all fours. And what I'd like to do is do a little bit of a side bend movement here. So I want you to think of your tail wagging, okay? So imagine you've got a big long tail, maybe picture it in space, what it looks like. Is it furry? Is it long? Is it reptile-like? What does it look like? And I want you to just start to guide the tail in your mind side to side. Now, it might not move super far right now, but just starting to feel that side movement. Now pay attention that you're not in a hyper extended position through your back, so you're nice and neutral and lengthened. And then begin to look at your tail. So the head bends sideways, the waist bends sideways. If you had an overhead view, you'd be able to kind of see this a little bit more clearly. So you're kind of opening up the waist on one side, I like to think of it that way rather than shortening the waist on the other side. So I'm kind of opening the ribs away from the pelvis, opening the ribs away from the pelvis, 
and just see if it feels different on each side. Are you letting go of your belly? So just try and see if you can keep that connection. And then just come back into a little shell, but not a, not a full shell, kind of a hollowed cat stretch shell. And just breathe into the back of your body. Try and feel like you're stretching a bit of your mid back, your rib cage. Just starting to stretch that tissue out. And then you're just gonna come to sitting, taking your hands behind your legs and just starting to feel the pelvis here in this position. Does it feel like it's working really hard to sit you up? Could you feel lightness as you sit up? So that the center of you is actually lifting up. Imagine there's like uh, a big flexible tube rather than a column through the middle of you. So I'm really feeling this elastic feeling of going up. And as you walk down your legs, I want you to soften the front of the legs, soften the front of the thighs. You might find as you walk down, your feet want to come with you. So I'm just trying to soften here. And again, I want you to tilt the pelvis from the front. And we're just gonna roll all the way down. It was just a little prep for getting us on the floor. Use your head blocks as you need to here. Bring your feet in line with your sitting bones. And just settle yourself nice and wide on the mat. Take a nice breath in. As you breathe out, sigh the ribs. And really make that connection to the back ribs. Inhale. Exhale, sigh. You might find you can wiggle yourself down the mat a little bit more. As you sigh this time, I want you to gently bring the front of the pelvis towards the ribs, very softly. So I want you to see how far you can take it Maybe before your bum or your back start to want to kick in. And then can you lengthen the front of you as you inhale down? So I'm kind of thinking of the pubic bone moving away from the rib cage. It's a feeling of this abdominal tissue stretching. You can even do this with yourself. That the one hand is on your ribs, the one hand is down by your pubic bone, and you're, you're kind of stretching, massaging that tissue. And then hip bones to ribs, very gently lengthening your sacrum. So I'm not trying to push my sacrum down or even to over engage the muscles of the tummy. I'm really trying to roll the pelvis. Okay, so take hold of your pelvic calves if you need to. Really feel that it's more the front of you that is guiding you into the position and the bones rolling rather than your muscles tensing. So there should be a quietness in the back of your legs. Okay, if the back of the legs are kicking on a lot, then you need to refocus, maybe soften, maybe kind of find a new feeling for yourself. So rocking 12, rocking six. You should notice the movement in your head. So as the pelvis is rolling, the head should be rolling as well. If you're not doing that, you're probably fixing the pelvis just a little bit too uh, contained. So it should be very free that it feels like your head nicely rocks as well. And then you're gonna settle in that lovely neutral. You're gonna notice if you're a little bit over on one side than the other, maybe just do a little three and nine of your pelvis, I'm feeling a little bit in my feet, very gently as if they're kind of molding into the floor. One leg going a little bit more up than the other and then just feeling that I'm in the middle. Arms just down nice and comfortably. I want you to focus on one leg, just arcing very gently in your hip. And I want you to see if you can keep the weight through the pelvis in the middle and try and find the freedom in your hip. So you're just folding it into that hip socket really lightly. 
no plunking, no crunching, almost, if you can, no effort from this front of the thigh. Okay, you might even want to just kind of feel like you're scooping from underneath. So I'm just trying to get that rhythm and then melt into the leg that was just working and fold into the other leg. So I really want you guys to feel the freedom of the movement as you go up and down. That's it. Just feeling the space, the ball rolling in the socket. Now as you take that one leg up, let it fall down deep into your hip. Let the pelvis weight sink into the mat. See if you can float the other leg out very effortlessly. Both legs are now deep in your pelvis. Find where the legs need to be, where you're not overworking these front guys. And then I want you to exhale and start to roll one leg downward into your little femur arc. But I want the quality of when we were just kind of free floating that leg. Okay, I'm just slowing it down so that the pelvis can really feel the mat. Exhale, as you are, inhale to come back. And there's such a tendency for the front of the hips to grip. So with each one, I want you to try and soften. I want you to try and deepen the legs in the hips. I want you to keep it quite close to you, not too big. And just do one more on each side. We're going to build this up a little bit. We're going to have a little break in the middle. And then just slide the legs down. Let the pelvis tilt a little bit so you go to six. And then let it come to 12 with the legs long. So again, from the front of the pelvis. So go to six, rolling the hip bones away. Exhale, 12. See if you can get that sacrum on the bed, on your mat. Oh, that's quite hard with the legs long, especially if you have tightness here. But it gives a really uh, strong connection to the back of the legs. So roll the pelvis to six with the legs long. And then from the front of the pelvis to the ribs, roll that sacrum. My knees actually need to bend a little bit to get the pelvis there. But then I get a really uh, kind of warm connection to my hamstrings and to my deep belly. So do that one more time. Roll to six. And roll to 12 from the front of you. Feel when that sacrum is connected to the mat. And then slide your legs up, take your head block away. We're gonna bring the feet a little bit closer to you. And I want you to melt your feet down and just let your pelvis come up just to where it's calm. So there's no tension. We're not tilting the pelvis first. We're just gonna suspend. I want you to put your hands at the front of your pelvis. And as you push a little bit more through your feet, you're going to tilt the pelvis to your ribs. So the hip bones are being guided to your rib cage. So I've just got my uh, palms of my hands on the hip bones. As the feet melt down, the hip bones are going to come towards the ribs. Connecting the inner thighs, sending the thigh bones, not my thigh muscles, my thigh bones forward. Now, I feel a little bit sticky today. You might feel that as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to lead with one hip. So I want you to hover in the middle, just that little suspension. And then I want you to lead with your right hip. So the right hip is going higher. It's still falling towards the ribs a little bit, but the right thigh bone is going a little bit more enthusiastically into the bridge. So we should feel a connection to the right back of the leg. Make sure you're not lifting too high in your back, that the back is kind of long and reaching forward. And then as you go down, you should feel that you kind of lay down on the left-hand side of yourself. Inhale back to the center. Exhale, hover. And then lead a little bit with your left side. So I've still got the hands on the hip bones. I'm letting the hip bone fall to the ribs, but feeling the left leg go forward. There's my connection to the back of my legs and bum. Checking in my back hasn't done too much. 
and then lay it down on the right. Inhale at the bottom. Exhale, hover, and then lead on that right side. Right hip to rib, right thigh bone, not thigh muscle, thigh bone forward. Check your lower back. Could you scoop the sacrum under a little bit more? And then lay, almost letting go of all the tissue to let it come down. Inhale back to center, exhale, come up the left. So let's do that one more time. So that might really give you some indication of what side is a little bit stronger than the other. And then come down that right side. Now you're gonna come back through the middle. So hover, hands at the hip bones, melt through the feet, tilt the pelvis, a little bit more 12 as you go from the front. Check the low back. Now you should feel, hopefully, both cheeks and hamstrings. Now I want you to put your hands on the side of you here, so the arms along the body. Take them a little bit away and send your hips over to each hand. So a side to side little shift. I want you to try to keep your bridge position so that the butt doesn't lower, the hips are level, so we're not doing a rotation, we're doing a side glide. That should really, again, kind of uh, activate each, each leg a little bit. And then melt all the way down. Ooh, you should feel your bum. Let's take the leg up. And just do a little circle. So bringing the legs towards you around, but kind of feeling like your pelvis is doing the roll. So you're kind of doing a pelvic clock holding onto your legs. So I'm kind of trying to go around the edges of the pelvic bowl. So go around the edges of the pelvic bowl and then go the other way. So really feeling the top surface of the sacrum Kind of the edge of your crest of the pelvis down to the tail and around the other crest. You can almost feel like there's a hollowing kind of flatness in the middle. And do that one more time. And then arrive in the middle and your legs are already in tabletop. I want you to float your arms up. Let your shoulders glide apart and together for a few times. And feel where you can feel your upper back on the mat and your shoulder blades are wide, so you kind of can't feel the edges of your shoulder blades. Let's scissor the arms, one arm going down, one arm going overhead. I'm just keeping tabletop, keeping the legs nice and calm in the hip sockets, rotating the arms on the side of you, Feeling the shoulder blades gliding. So we don't want to fix the shoulder blades. Now, as you're moving the arms, you're going to start to float up your shins, making sure you're still fairly soft here through the front of the thighs. Now, we're going to start to reach the legs. So I want you to pause the arms in the middle, and I want you to do opposite arm to leg reaching. So the same arm reaches down as the leg that goes forward. Inhale to come back up. Exhale the other side. And I want you to really pay attention to how far before you lose your sacrum. Your arms might take you out of neutral. Your legs might take you out of neutral. So pay attention to what's happening here. It should feel very deep and heavy on the, on the sacrum, but you're not trying to shove the sacrum down. So feel free to not go so far with the arm and leg if you're losing that connection. Let's go two more. Nice deep breath in. Also, if you feel some clunking and cracking happening, it means that you're not connecting your leg into your abdomen, that it's hanging out a little bit. 
Okay, let's do a little kind of open circle for the legs now. So now the pelvis is going to stay still and the legs are going to circle. If your pelvis wants to come up a little bit when you circle, that's fine. Um, if that feels good for you, but then kind of settle it and, and let the legs stir in your hips. And then you're going to keep the legs kind of still in the middle, but slightly apart. And you're going to let one leg go forward, but it's going to take the arm with it. So I'm just holding my hands on the knees. And then the other leg goes forward and it takes the arm with it. Now when it takes my arm, the shoulder blade glides off the mat. The body should feel, and we might want to put the headlock behind, I'm just feeling that myself. Uh, we should feel that the body is rotating. So as your leg goes forward and it takes the arm and the shoulder blade goes with it, we're rotating. So we're just feeling the back of the body give. Just do two more of those, just arcing the leg and keeping the hand glued so that the shoulder blades start to move on your back. And then bring the, uh, bring the legs back down. Interlace your hands behind the head. If you have a soft ball, um, I would suggest that you use this for the chest lift if you're not very good at flexing off the ground. Um, if you don't have it, then you're just doing it from the floor. Hands interlaced, cup the head and feel from your shoulder blades through to your elbows, to your hands, you're holding the weight of the, leg, uh, of the head. Take a breath in. From the back of the pelvis, come up through the low back, through the mid back, breastbone heavy, ribs heavy, peel up. Now I'm not very good at doing my chest lifts just from the floor. I know I need to practice them and I need to get better at them, but I'm gonna use the ball, but still the same focus. We inhale, from the back of the pelvis, we scoop up. We wanna feel the elastic in the back of you. And at the same time, you're melting your breastbone down and your rib cage behind you into the ball or into the mat. Resist the urge to to push the head forward. The head is actually almost falling back into your hands. And then roll back towards the mat. Inhale. Exhale, curl up, melt the breastbone down, the ribs behind you, lengthen the back body. Even if it feels like you don't go that far, but you're doing it in the right way, so much better. What you want to avoid is the strain. The deep belly muscles hug in. If you feel you're pushing out your deep belly, you're actually compressing yourself. So we need to, let's actually have one hand at the head, one hand at the belly. So when you come up, can you draw away from your hand at your belly? And if you start to feel it pushing in or pushing out, take another breath. Exhale, draw it away from your hand and maybe go that little bit further. And then come back down, change hands. Inhale. So I'm drawing my belly away from my hand gently as you move up. Inhale there. Draw away from your belly hand, go a little bit further. And then come all the way down. Now, let's take a little femur arc on one side. Let's exhale, come up and rotate to your leg. But I want you to feel like you lift and peel the opposite shoulder off your mat or your ball. And then come back to center. Take the other leg, femur arc. Exhale, peel up, rotate gently. Inhale, back down. So if you're on the floor, you can do this actually really nicely without even coming up that much. I can actually just roll across onto the bottom arm. So I'm not really lifting super far with my head. I'm trying to feel the shoulder blade peeling off the mat on the opposite side. 
Okay, the biggest thing you want to get is the back body elastic stretching. It's not about kind of pulling the head forward. Okay, let's just do one more. Exhale. And then release all the way down and stretch it out. Now we're just gonna do, we're gonna come back to this a little bit later, but hopefully we've prepped the work. I want you to take your hands behind your legs. Um, when you hold behind your legs, kind of keep your hands open. Try not to grab your legs. So I'm actually just molding the flesh of the uh, hamstrings into my hand. I'm actually not grabbing my legs. So I'm just kind of molding them there, keeping a little circle. Let the leg bones go forward, kind of like we did with this one, the alternating. Legs go forward. You're gonna peel up into your chest lift. Now imagine your hands at your belly. Is the belly popping out or is it going in? Can it go in as the legs go forward and take us up? Okay, because if the belly goes hard and pushes out, again, we're compressing, we're gonna shorten. If you didn't get up uh, very well, that's absolutely fine. You're just gonna do a little cheat, I'll show you. But then we're gonna practice this, where we hold the legs. Again, I'm not grabbing, I'm just molding the hands into the back of the thighs. Then I want you to imagine your hand here again, and you're gonna draw your belly away from your third hand. <laughs> okay, and I'm just gonna mold the sacrum back to the mat, okay? So what I'd like you to do, those of you that get a little bit stuck, which is totally fine, we come up, we check that third hand, see if we can go there, maybe we get stuck, could you draw away from your imaginary hand, go that little bit further, and then if you do really get stuck, just roll onto your side, sit yourself up, and then come back into that roll back, okay? And then try and roll up the other way. This is about um, really trying to soften yourself in this. I know it sounds counterintuitive, but actually when you soften your belly away from your third hand and you soften the hips and you allow the pelvis to roll, again, if we do it from the front of us, then it works. But if we are clenching from the back, it won't work. Okay, take a breath in. Exhale, let those legs go forward. Peel the upper back like that chest lift. Draw away from your imaginary hand in your belly. Let the legs go forward into your hand. And if you get stuck, you roll. And then you come back up. Let's do that one more time. Roll back. Legs. Soft. Roll the front of the pelvis away from your legs. Deep in your belly, gently. Again, if you do it too much, then it goes a bit haywire. Let's do this one last time. Legs go forward, body peels up. Maybe you want a little bit of a warrior tongue to finish. Ah. Sometimes that just gives you the emphasis to come back up. Good. Awesome, awesome. So let's come around and we'll balance it out with a little bit of some extension work. So let's come to the floor. Um, again, if you don't extend very well, the ball can be very helpful at the chest, just peeling through. Um, let's start in a little W position. What I want you guys to get when you're on the front is trying to get this crease of the leg to be on the mat, okay? Often when we come down into the floor, the hip bones are more on the mat. So we've got to wiggle to get more of the crease of the leg on the mat. Those of you that have quite flared ribs forward, I am one of them. Um, I always, when I'm on my front, I reposition the ribs almost up under me and then try and lay a little bit more on the chest rather than on the ribs. And that can really help open up the low back. Okay, so legs are going down the mat. I'm trying to get into that crease of the legs and I can really only get that when the ribs are kind of up a little bit more. So then my sacrum can go down towards the feet. Okay, hands in W, so uh, hands by your ears, nice and comfortable for your shoulders. 
And I want you to take a nice breath in and soften the front of your thighs. Take another breath in and then gently engage the belly wall, very gently. Because we don't want to go too strong but then we start tensing things. So it's like a little whisper of a lift. And then I want you to travel in your mind up from your pubic bone through the abdominal wall, kind of on both sides of the abdominal wall, coming up to the rib cage. Then the rib cage, instead of going down into the floor, has to go forward. As it's going forward, the legs are very gently, it's almost like you're reaching through the bones of your legs. The legs are reaching down the mat. I want you to keep very light with your hands. Okay, so the hands aren't really pushing. And just come up before the belly drops or the back starts to kind of hinge. So see if you can keep that belly gently connected, like you've got a little waistband that's a little bit uh, tighter. And let those shoulders be really free on your back to come out. And then peel back down. So it's not a big movement, we're just getting that upper back movement. So if you're on the ball, you can have this feeling of going over the ball. And then as you go forward, you can roll your ball. Good, connecting the tummy. Light through the hands, okay? That's really key because the spine that actually we want to grow and lengthen and find space with. Eyes, nose, chin, chest, tongue at the roof of the mouth. Mm -hmm. So you're making an end sound as you go up, okay? Just keep, keep paying attention to, so keep going. I want you to pay attention to this part of your spine staying very stable. How do we keep it stable? We keep the sacred wall, we keep a light connection there. So when you come up, the moving part is just your upper back. You want this part to feel very, very flexible and this part to feel very connected and, uh, and stable, okay? So it's a gradual, really let your breath move you. I think sometimes we go too helpful leather in this movement and we go too strong and the shoulders get locked up and the legs get locked up. It's really, even if you just move a little bit, it's a very free feeling. Now, once you're up kind of part way, you're feeling like the low back is staying long, so I'm just a little hovered off the mat. You're gonna turn the shoulders and gaze over one shoulder. And as you do it, just make sure the pelvis hasn't moved. And then come back to kind of that hover, just a little bit off the mat, check your position, and then turn the shoulders, gaze over the other arm. Inhale to come back. Wiggle the pelvis a little bit in the middle. If you're feeling very tight this morning, I always do like a little wiggle, a little oscillation, send my legs back, and then see if it feels a little bit easier to go over. That felt a little bit better. Then come back, wiggle the pelvis, send the legs down, and then really feel from your hip to your opposite chest, this elastic feeling, okay? So what I try and feel is, is kind of this diagonal giving and then this diagonal giving as you go into these rotations, okay? So I kind of think from the thigh across the belly into the chest to turn and then come back to center from the thigh through the hip across and into the opposite chest. So it should feel like the elastic of the front of you is, is allowing this movement to happen. So that's why we need just a light tummy, okay? Because if we go too, too strong, then we don't actually go anywhere, okay? Let's do one more. Feel that lovely elastic. And release back down. Good, have another little wiggle of your pelvis. And I want the tip of the nose to be on the floor, your arms by your side here. Let's go palms facing in. So the, the thumb is resting 
uh, kind of the thumb and first finger are on the floor. Now I want you to elevate the shoulders a little bit and rotate them so that the shoulder blades come together gently. We've got to open the elastic of the front of the shoulders and then cover the arms a little bit. See if it pulls your upper body up a little bit into dart. And then come back down, let the shoulders relax back. So inhale, oscillate that pelvis, deep abdominals gently on. You're gonna rotate the upper arm height, elevate them a little bit so that the shoulders can actually rotate properly. If my shoulders are too far down, I can't actually rotate. So I elevate the shoulders a little bit, and then I can rotate my arms around. Now I feel the shoulder blades. I'm gonna check when those arms lift that the belly doesn't drop. And then through the arms, just take your upper body a little bit up. Still keeping long. I know this is hard and it probably doesn't feel like you're going very far. So elevate a little bit, rotate your upper arm. Feel the collarbones going out. So really wide chest, navel retracted, chest expanding, dart. How are those legs? Are they tensing? Check that they're soft and you're connected right through the middle of you. And then release. Let's just do one more of those. Elevate, rotate the upper arm, feel the arms lift, maybe your belly lifts a little bit more, and then lengthen right through the center of you, all the way to the crown of the head, and then release back down, and shell stretch back. Now we're going to do a little sequence that kind of brings us into this rotation again on our backs. So let's think a little bit about the assisted rollback. But this time we're going to kind of do the rolling like a ball. But really all I do in the rolling like a ball is think of that third hand. Going and drawing away from my belly. So. Uh, just maybe put one hand here when you're in the seated, uh, the seated position and just go oh, and draw your belly away from your hand. Oh, really light. It's not like you because look if I go too much. Yeah, my shoulders actually push backwards. So it's a very, very light drawing away. I always think of it like if, if I was trying to get into like a dress or jeans that were just a little bit too tight and I wanted to walk around, I would just pull back just a little bit. So kind of like that. So when you get into your balance and you can decide where you hold, you can hold on your shins, hold on the outside, maybe hold underneath, make sure you're not going to hit anything. All I want you to do is to draw that belly away from your third hand. That's it. That's all that takes me back there. I don't try and whip my legs. I just go, ah, draw my belly away. And as long as I can keep the shape, okay, nice. I don't know who you are, but I can see some rocking. And it doesn't actually need to be very big either. I just roll on the sacrum, come back up. If you find that this is helpful, having the hands come down, sometimes that's quite nice. So I use the hands on the floor. And of course, if this isn't feeling good at all, maybe you just do a little drawing back, sitting back up. So just do a few more. If you want to take a breather, that's totally cool. Rolling back and coming back up. And then on your next one, just stay at the top. And I'd like you to slowly come down to where your upper back is still lifted. So I'm kind of not going all the way down. Now we're going to settle the pelvis into neutral and reaching one leg forward, one leg in. At any time, if your neck is feeling yucky, Try and do the warrior tongue. Ah, ah. I'm dropping my tongue right down and really connecting into the breastbone. Ah. 
If that still doesn't feel good, just keep your head down, work through the legs. Let's take the hands behind the head. Here we go, and we can rotate. So even if I'm on the floor, we can have that nice supported position. If you're in the air, make sure it's not the head, that it's your body rotating very gently. You can take it into bent knees, so you don't have to stretch. You can slow it down. Let's go four. Let's go three. Keep the head down if it's too much. Two. And one. And then release. Oh, and stretch it all the way. Hopefully that was okay for your neck. Always, always, always listen to your neck. Your neck will tell you when it's too much. I learned that the hard way, and as you guys know, I've got a chronic neck pathology because I pushed, I pushed my neck too much, um, and now it's, it suffers because it doesn't know where it needs to be in space when I do those things. Okay, we're gonna do a little side kick. So I want you to lie on your side. If you can, have your arms straight down, maybe have a pillow underneath. Um, if that's too much, uh, you can actually prop your head, but just be careful here, because sometimes the head then kind of collapses, so it needs to be really supported here. I do prefer the arm down or this position if, uh, if I was gonna choose, okay? So the legs are forward, they're straight, so they're a little bit ahead of you on the mat, but make sure your spine is nice and lengthened, you're not tucked under, with your tail, so my tail is going straight down the mat. You're gonna press into the bottom leg and you're gonna hover this top leg hip height. I want you to really feel the leg in your hip socket. We're gonna send the leg back and I want you to imagine you're pushing into the air behind you. This hand is connected to the mat. So I want you to feel like there's a wall here behind you that you're pushing into. And then you release from the wall to kick it forward and then you push into the wall. So it's not a lot behind the hip, but it's a little bit further forward as it kicks. Now that depends on your hamstrings. The whole time the pelvis stays neutral. Okay, so we really wanna get the leg moving in the hip socket and keeping the pelvis from moving. You might find as the leg goes back that your other leg almost wants to reach forward. Let that happen. Exhale, reach the other leg forward. So I'm almost lifting it in the air for counterbalance for this leg. And then I drop it down as the leg kicks forward and lift. If that's too much, just keep it on the floor. Now let's see if you can keep that movement going with the arm up. I have to slow down. I have to check in that my pelvis isn't tucking and arching, that it's just the leg and the hip. Two more. That's too much. Keep the hands down. And then release it in. Other side. I always love a little leg kick. You've got to get to the stage really with your legs. And this took a while. I've said to kind of people before, I used to be really muscled with all my actions. And uh, I chronically had hip, hip problems, SI joint problems, neck issues, um, because everything was really muscled. I looked the same, the shape looked the same, but there was like too much effort in it. So that's your challenge is when you do these little leg movements, even when you start to float up the leg, I want you to feel more the elastic around the leg. So when you go back here, it's not like supercharged. I'm not tensed in my knee. It goes back, I'm thinking of the whole leg. And then inhale to go forward, I'm feeling the whole back of the leg elastic. So when you start thinking more fascially and actually not in muscle groups, much more effective. So this is the whole leg going back. And my leg attaches here at my rib cage. So I'm thinking right down the fascia of my belly through the hip into the foot. And then the elastic all the way down from the back of the spine, through the bum, through the hamstring, through the calf, right into the underside of my foot. 
Inhale, swing. Hopefully we're working deep in the hip. We're not moving the pelvis. Let's challenge it. Arm up if you like for a few. We forgot to say about that bottom leg. It's up to you. If you wanna just keep it planted or if you wanna feel that little lift, whatever feels good. Two more. One more. And then release it down. Ah. Just gonna finish with one more. We're gonna go back to our lovely front. And we're gonna allow a little bit more space through the front of the body. We're gonna bring the hands to a grasshopper elbow up position. You're gonna get that crease of your leg on the mat. You're gonna wiggle your pelvis. You're gonna reset your ribs. And you're gonna take a big breath in. Without overdoing the hands, you're gonna peel through that upper back. You're gonna wiggle a little bit the shoulders. Let the pelvis go loose. And then deep in the belly, reach the legs, go a little bit further. Still not really in my hands. Wiggle the pelvis, legs down. Wiggle the shoulders, go a little bit further. So I'm feeding that front body elastic slowly. Wiggle pelvis, wiggle shoulders, go a little bit further. Still connecting the belly, legs, pelvis, shoulders, go a little bit further. Ah. And then we can go hopefully all the way up to this one. If that doesn't feel good, please just go where you feel good to go. Okay? So legs soft, I'm not tensing the knees. Wiggle the pelvis, connect the tummy gently as you move that upper back. Hands are light. Wiggle the shoulders, go a little bit further. Let your tummy be free. The outer tummy, your rectus abdominis, your obliques need to be very flexible. It's the deep abdominals that need to be connected. If you start connecting too much of your obliques and your rectus abdominis, you won't be able to do extensions. Let's do that one more time. Wiggle, deep abdominals, flexible outer muscles. Nice, soft connection. And then sitting back into a little shell. Slowly rolling up. Finding your standing posture, rolling up nice and slowly. Coming to the top. Taking your hand onto your rib, your other hand, kind of scooping up. So I'm holding my rib cage. I want you to guide your rib cage up away from your hip and send that leg down. Notice how much you stretch your arm. Can you ease back the arm? And see if you can just add a little bit more space, like a little accordion opening up on that side you're holding. And then bring it back, lower the arm. Other side, hug the ribs, reach the arm. Just comfortable, let the ribs lift up. It's almost like I'm pulling my upper body higher away from the pelvis, that leg is going down into the floor. Check your shoulder, is it doing too much? Could the ribs go a little bit more? Even if it was just like a millimeter or two. And then release, and then you might notice how far you actually went up. And lift the ribs. Find that decompression. The same leg side goes down. Check your ribs aren't popped forward, the ribs are in your body. Lift, feel the fascia giving, and release. And last one, find that comfortable position for the arm. Lift through the center of you. I'm guiding with my hand that rib cage up, even if it just feels like you're almost pulling your clothing up. That can be really powerful actually for the fascia. So it just feels like I'm lifting my shirt up, but actually when I let go, I have moved quite a lot. Good, lovely guys. Take a nice breath in. Find your centers. Breath out. 